this is something that many, 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 many singers mess up. And this is something that specifically pop singers are so good at. Um, listen to the consonants and the drums and how in sync they are. The consonants are insanely on time. I mean, I don't think you can get more on time than that. But the phrase is not, you know, it's not like overly rhythmic. It's, it's very legato. It's very smooth. It's very elegant. It's a, it's a difficult thing to, to be able to do and manage for a lot of people. So this is worth pointing out. And that timeliness presents itself on the runs as well. All of my life, only for you. I want to point out that in emotions, in the same concert, uh, in emotions as well as in uh, the journey cover, open arms, um, the vowels that she decides to use there are very different. She goes with brighter vowels, the more, the more like energetic the song is. For this, this is a very intimate tune. And so look at the vowels, they're not as bright. And that makes it kind of a more intimate sound. Okay, okay. Okay, vocal gymnastics. That's brilliant. These, these extreme contrasts of, of dynamic of volume uh, is a very dramatic choice. It's very, very, uh, well, cool. Um, though I probably am not the arbiter of what's cool. Um, I have a bowl cut that should probably put me out of the running. But I think it's cool for what that's worth. So I want to point out here um, there's, there are a couple of ways to go up, uh, when you're singing, you can just kind of like raise your larynx and try to be as gentle as you can with the air and you get this, uh, and not tilt anything. I don't practice that often, so I probably send it around this, but she's doing that, making it very gentle as she ascends, which requires extremely precise breath because otherwise the folds are so thin, they'll blow open into falsetto. This is not falsetto, it's just really light. That. And then into the belt. The lack of vibrato means that her thyroid cartilage is not tilted. Um, the thyroid cartilage is the Adam's apple. It's, the, it's very large and it's connected to the vocal folds. So when you have vibrato, it's a result of the thyroid cartilage being tilted. So she's not tilting anything. And it's very, this is actually quite difficult um, to do and, and have sound good. So in this one phrase, she uh, ascends with no tilt, she adds tilt, and then she also goes through belt. Like, I, 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 if you didn't hear what I'm talking about, please go over that section again and again and again and listen for if there's no vibrato and it's breathy, that would be no tilt. If there's vibrato at all, that would be tilt. If, and I mean, uh, the belts, I think, are quite obvious, but it's like every little note of every little phrase is so specific. It's extremely, extremely uh, yeah, it's difficult to be this nuanced, let alone this using such intricate technique to be nuanced. I mean, it's preposterous. Proximity effect and using the microphone. Look at how specific she is. This is a matter of, of inches and millimeters that she's moving this mic, but it's very, very intentional. The, the rounder vowels are going to be perceived as less loud, 
because they don't have higher frequencies associated with them. So what she does is she goes closer to the microphone to increase the volume of these lower uh, notes here. And she purses her lips, which elongates the vocal tract, which also emphasizes the low frequencies. Let's have that. The way she transitions between belting and and like oh this is is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Like she that she just transitions through all of these things so easily and consistently. And it's not like an on-off switch, right? She's not pressing like a button and all of a sudden it changes. She's like gradually shifting through all of these techniques, like some sort of MMA ninja. And like So when she's breathy here, um, and we spoke about this in, in one of the other videos, when she's breathy here, it's it's her folds not completely adducting because the, the polyp or the nodule gets kind of in the way. Um, you can also just sound breathy without a polyp or nodule, uh, but it tends to be more dramatic with Mariah when she goes to her breathy tone. And then she'll, uh, well, she does a lot. Let's hear the breathy tone first. And then she'll bring her folds a little bit more together. Uh, specifically in that, she's introducing some twang. There's a muscle called the aryepiglottic sphincter, and when it contracts, it is responsible for twang, but it's not, again, not an on-off switch. You can, you can contract it and let loose, and there's a whole range of motion. And so really pay attention to her phrasing and, and listen to all these little things that she does. Even if you don't know what physically is going on, listen to the sounds. They're dramatically different. I want to point out that aspirate abrupt. When when it comes to her runs, she's incredibly, incredibly specific and, and very uh adept at understanding the meter. So um so if you're in if you're in four four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? You give you give emphasis to certain beats. Um and I mean it's not it's not always the same, right? Like you can have one, two, three, four. Um Emphasis on one and three is like comically white. Uh, so, but if you don't give emphasis, it tends to be just kind of like a bunch of like mush. It's like, oh, there's a bunch of notes, cool. But when you add rhythmic emphasis, you get a much more well-defined run. So you see all of that, if you slow it down and if you're a singer and you want, uh, if you want to get good at runs, uh, go to this video. The timestamp is uh, 11 minutes, 53 seconds. Slow it down and really try to clap it out and try to understand where she's giving the emphasis because it's incredibly intricate. There's been a many, many instances on this entire uh, concert where she goes down into the low and it's very breathy. And that's um, that's probably smart. If you want it to sound kind of lush and smoky, Jasmine Sullivan is like so good at this. Um, it's okay if you're if you're leaking a little bit of air. Uh, in this instance, though, she is tilting her thyroid cartilage in her low. So when you tilt the thyroid cartilage, because it goes like this, it extends the vocal tract, which means which means it becomes more rich, right? Larger instrument. More emphasis on the on the on the lower frequencies. So if I do uh, versus uh, right, forgive me, I'm an opera singer. Uh, so, but she's doing that. She's giving this uh, thyroid tilt, which makes it far more lush. And if you should remember that we belong to Again, and I've, I'm. I brought it up before, but I just want to stress the point. Listen to how smooth the phrase is, but listen to the consonants uh, and where they are uh, alongside the drums. Okay, pop modulation, I see you. Her, her sense of drama is, is so admirable. So like this entrance, 
right? <laughs> like she understands how to be dramatic. Uh, and this, this, this singing here is just incredible. Modulation, pop modulation. Let's go. Ah, oh, from here. From there to the pop modulation. And notice how this is this is a very, very difficult, you know, a lot of composers and a lot of classically trained people um, are very uh, uh, dismissive of pop modulations because you're just taking the thing that you did and then going up a half step. <laughs> like you raise me up does it like what three times but as a singer from a technical point of view it's extremely difficult listen to the belt that she's doing here let's go back versus when she was in here the depth of sound right like these are very tricky adjustments to make. You have to be lighter if you're going up. Um, that's just how that works. And so she makes these adjustments and, and it's like flawless. <sighs> so freaking good. Pro I want to give props to these... Uh, backup singers. So when Mariah on her albums, when she does overdubs, she tends to use like a lot of, uh, kind of a, like there's a little bit of air leaking going on and it creates this really interesting effect. Uh, when you're doing audio, if you're mixing, if you put an equalizer on the voice, which means you can kind of mold the frequencies and change it. If you take 10 kilohertz and up, uh, there's like this sizzle, and it's very common to just arbitrarily slap that on a vocal track when you are mixing, particularly lead vocals. Um, but in Mariah's case, it's it's you can't you can't just do that by default because of the uh, the polyps giving a little bit of a hiss, depending on the part of her range. And so what these backup singers are doing is they're actually mimicking that brilliantly. And this is this is like she just man she just picks the best. Um, listen to how this is breathy kind of sizzly tone from the backup singers. You know what I'm saying? Picking up what I'm putting down. Yes, Queen. 